All right, now in this lesson, we're going to talk a little bit more about the interface in the sense that how to get around your documents and navigate through them, either through multiple documents or with a single document. And we're going to start by talking about the Zoom features. Now, there have been some enhancements to the Zoom tools inside Photoshop CS4. If you're coming from previous versions, you'll appreciate these. And there are some of the older features that are also still there. So in the toolbar, I'm going to go down here. I'm going to select my Zoom tool. And one thing right off the bat, if you click on the Zoom tool, actually clicking on it once will select it. But if you double click it, notice my image right now is at 50%. It says it right here in the, in the title, and it's also right here in my Zoom level. If I double click on it, it's going to bring it to 100%. Now, this is a relatively high-res file, so it made it really big in my document. And you can see it's 100% here, it's 100% there. So double clicking on the zoom tool is certainly one way of zooming in and out. Another way is a popular keyboard shortcut I like to use, which is the command key. That would be the control key on a PC. And then the plus and minus keys. So if I control or command minus, it will actually zoom it out in steps. Now one very cool thing about the tool is I've got the zoom tool selected. If I click on this image and hold, it'll actually zoom in real time almost as if it were like a video. It's actually got fluid zooming in and out. And if I add the space bar, if I actually just hold down the space bar with my document, it turns into the hand tool temporarily and allows me to move around my document. So if I just move this around, and another new thing with Photoshop CS4 is that it's smooth. If you have an iPhone, you'll, you'll be familiar with this feature. If I just click and drag, it's got fluid movement. Actually, the slides like that. It's a very cool feature. Now again, I'm going to hold down my zoom key a little bit and going a little bit closer and, and when, after it goes past 600% magnification you actually get a grid here this is a pixel grid and basically outlines you know, the individual pixels that make up your image so you can see we're really close in here we're at 810% and we can see the individual pixels in there now to zoom out using the tool I'm going to hold down the option key that would be the alt key in a PC and you can see that the tool changes from a plus to a minus so if I click and hold, it'll actually zoom back out of the document really fluid like that. And it pops right back into place. And I'm just going to press Command Plus to bring it back to 50%. So it's a quick and easy way to zoom in and out of your document. And when I'm at 100%, I'm able to double-click that tool. And again, I showed you you can move around with the hand tool to get to very specific parts if you're working very close in on your document. And another way of managing the magnification of your image is up here in the... Uh, options bar, when you've got the zoom tool selected, you notice you've got a number of different features here. You can actually choose whether it's going to zoom in and out right in here, or again, you can use that keyboard shortcut, option or alt. You can resize the windows to fit, zoom all windows. You can set it. These are various buttons here for specific functions. You can do actual pixels, which is the same as doing 100%, like double clicking on the zoom tool, as you saw. You've got the fit screen which will make it fit your currently open document area, as you can see right there. It popped it right in there so we can see the whole thing. Fill screen, again, fills up your entire open screen area. Fit screen basically looks at the dimensions of your images and it does its best to fit it in there, make it all visible. Notice we've got some open area on the sides. That's where fill screen goes in. Notice it cropped out some of the top and bottom, but it did fill in the entire open area there. And print size, of course, shows you what its dimensions is currently set at. If we go into the image menu and go to image size, you'll notice that it's relatively high res, 300 uh, pixels per inch, and we'll get a little bit more in depth with resolution in a later lesson, but I just wanted you to see. It's got a pre relatively high resolution, but low dimensions. It's only 5 inches, or just over 5 inches by 3 inches. So it's very, very small. So showing it at print size is going to make it look very small. It's still very high res, but it's very small on my screen. Let's go ahead and go back to actual size. So it's a quick and easy way of zooming in and out and managing how you zoom in and out of your document. Now another way of doing that, and this is an older feature, if you go under the window menu and open up the navigator right here, and let's just drag that out of the panels there so we can see, and we'll close that group there. The navigator allows you to do very similar things just in a separate window. Notice we've got a mini version of our file, and this red outline indicates this currently visible area. And by grabbing that and moving around, we can actually navigate around our document a little bit better. And you can use this slider to zoom in and out. Enter a specific percentage if you like. We'll do 25%. And now we have that. So the Navigator is another panel to open with the way they've set up the new features now where you can just zoom in and out fluidly if you hold the tool down. It makes it a lot easier in your workflow. 
Now, one quick thing about navigating around the document is working between other documents. So you notice I've got a number of different files open here. If I were to wanted to drag and drop in previous versions, let me go in, into the window menu and actually turn off the application frame. In previous versions, this is what we would see, especially on a Mac. You would see the various documents all stacked on top of each other. And to drag and drop one image into another, you would simply just grab it with the move tool and then drag it into the target document and it plops right in there. Now, if you are in your application frame and you've got all these tab documents, it's a little more difficult because you're only seeing one image at a time. So if I wanted to, for instance, take that image that we had and drag it to another file, I would simply grab it and then drag it up to that name and it will open up that file and then you just move down and release and it will drag and drop that file in there. So the quick and easy way of dragging and dropping between files when you're working in the application mode with all the tab documents. Now one last thing I want to talk about when it comes to moving around your documents is, as I mentioned in the earlier lesson, we were talking about the tiling modes here. And if we wanted to compare other images with other um, various open documents with the others. And so let's go, for instance, and do the three up since we have three documents open, just like this. So if I double click my zoom tool, it's only going to zoom in on my currently active document. However, if I hold down my shift key and I double click that zoom tool, it's going to bring all the other files to the same magnification. Now because this image is considerably higher res than these other two, it looks a lot bigger on the window there. So let's go over here and we'll move these into place. So let's just go ahead and zoom these into these individually so we fill our screen. Now, if I wanted to compare certain parts of these images together and I want to maneuver around, if I hold, if I select an image and hold down my space bar to access my hand tool and just move this, it'll move the one image. But if you hold down the space bar and the shift key, you'll notice it will move all of the windows at the same time, allowing you to move spe specific parts. If you're working on two images simultaneously, in fact, let me do this. Let's go ahead and close these. And with this image here, I'm going to go ahead and go under image and go to duplicate. And what it's going to do is create an exact copy of this file. And you'll notice there. And let's just do a quick uh, adjustment to this. Let's just go in here and make it darker. And uh, I'm going to go into my mode or image menu and go to adjustments. And let's just do the brightness and contrast. And I'm just going to make a really silly change so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just going to increase the contrast and drop the brightness to make it a little bit more dramatic. So now I want to see the before and after of that. So let's go into that tile mode and bring a two up here. And let's um, hold down that shift key and double click that space bar. And now I'm going to hold down that shift, the space bar and the shift key and maneuver these at the same time. So I can compare them. I can maneuver around the document and compare various parts right next to each other there. So it's allowing me to get around and move those to see what I want to see without a lot of complicated going in here and then moving this one around and then making this one at the same time. So really easy way of moving between documents, being able to compare documents and zooming in and out to get a little closer look at it. So keys here are the zoom tools, the zoom features, being able to zoom in and out, those using those command keys, command minus, command plus, simply clicking and holding on that zoom tool will zoom it in and having that hand tool to move around the document when you're really close in there. So these are key features that you're going to find very useful when you start working a little bit more in depth with larger images or even multiple images. So now we're going to jump over to the next lesson where we're going to talk about history, going back in time. And you remember when we were talking about the preferences earlier, we had our history states that we can input. So I want to talk a little bit more in depth about history and the various options you have with that.